Hey guys, what's up and welcome back. So last week I released a video on my DJI goggles that I recently bought. And when I published that video, I got a few comments from you guys seeming surprised at how far I was able to fly with my drone on the digital system. And a few of you guys wanted to know how I did it. And in that video, you can see that when I did my first digital flight, my range wasn't actually that far. Uh, I was only able to fly maybe 200 meters, 300 meters, but even up to that point, my video reception was pretty pixelated. Just overall, it wasn't that great. But then after a few adjustments, just a few minutes and no additional purchases required, I was able to significantly increase the capabilities of these goggles and I was able to take my drone over a mountain, dive all the way down with almost perfect reception the entire time. So that's what I wanna to talk to you guys about today. And the things I'm gonna share are no secret. Some of you already might know what I'm gonna talk about, but for those of you who are new, maybe you guys just picked up a pair of these, I'm gonna share a few tips that apply directly to these goggles to make sure that you can fly further and get the most performance out of these as possible. So I'm gonna to try to make this one quick. Let's get into it. Now, I should mention that these tips will work for both the traditional DJI Air unit and the Cadex Vista. Uh, the steps will vary a little bit, but I'll explain both in detail. So, the first step is to make sure that you're flying on the highest output power possible. To check what output power you're using, you're gonna wanna power on your goggles, go to the device tab, and make sure that your max power output is set to 700. This should be the highest number that is offered to you. Now, it's important to keep in mind that the higher the power output you're using, the more heat your video transmitter will generate, and the higher the chance will be of your video transmitter overheating. So to prevent that from happening, I highly recommend that you don't leave your quad sitting around plugged into a battery for long periods of time before you take off. And then once you land, I suggest that you unplug your battery as quickly as possible. When your quad is in the air and the propellers are spinning and there's wind blowing on it, it's a lot better at dissipating heat and keeping cool. But when it's sitting on the ground, plugged into a battery, that's when things can get problematic. Of course, overheating might happen either way, in the air or on the ground, but when your quad isn't in motion, the chances are just much higher. If you're successful in changing your max power to 700 and you're still having range issues, try turning auto temp control off. Some flight controllers have a problem using the setting properly and they could still be limiting your power output to 25 milliwatts. But if you're not having a problem, definitely keep this feature on. It's also important to note that in some countries, flying at a power output higher than 25 milliwatts is illegal. So it's definitely a good idea to check your local laws before you decide whether or not you wanna follow any of these tips. In fact, some of you guys living outside of the US might even notice that you're not able to change your power output at all. This is because when the DJI software notices that you live outside of certain regions, an automatic region lock could be applied that would drastically limit your power output to 25 milliwatts, which would significantly decrease your range. What really sucks is that sometimes these region locks can be applied within countries where these regulations and limitations are not even required. Luckily, there is something you can do. And I don't know who discovered this first, but there are a few hacks that you can do to your goggles that will trick them into thinking that you're in a different region and will allow you to unlock their full potential and then even surpass those limits and take them even further. Here's what you have to do. If you're a Windows user, right click on your desktop, select New, Text Document, and you're gonna name it NACO, N-A-C-O. Now, if we right click on that and check its properties, you'll see that the type of file is indeed Text Document or .txt. If you're doing this on a Mac, you can use whatever software uh, you want to make this text document as well but just make sure that it defaults to .txt. Now, we're gonna double click it to open it, and this is where we're gonna insert our hacks. And this is really serious hacking business. You don't wanna mess this up, so make sure you guys are listening carefully. 
what you guys are going to write is the number one and that's it. You're going to save it. You're done. You've just created the ultimate hack that DJI does not want you knowing about. I actually have no idea if DJI wants us to know this or not, but that's it. That's all you have to do. Now, instead of writing the number one, you can actually choose a number in the range of one to eight, each number corresponding with a different region. So if you wanted to change that number one to correspond with whatever region you're currently in, you're welcome to do that as well. Uh, I don't believe all of them will allow you to go all the way up to 700 milliwatts. The number one refers to the FCC region in the United States, which allows you to unlock the full capabilities of these goggles and will also allow you to do uh, the next hack that I'm about to tell you about. But I also don't want to encourage anybody to break any laws, so it's your choice. So the next step is to take that file from your computer and put it either into your Air Unit or your Cadex Vista, whatever your drone has installed. First, start by plugging in a battery into your goggles and powering them on. Then if you're using an Air Unit, which I'm not, all you're gonna wanna do is take the file from your computer, put it on a micro SD card, and stick it into the micro SD slot in your air unit. Then, all you're gonna do is plug in a battery into your drone, power it on, wait a few seconds, and your drone should be converted to FCC mode. That's it. If you're using a Cadex Vista, since there's no micro SD slot on the Vista unit itself, Instead, you're going to have to connect a wire from the Vista unit to your computer and then power it on. This should open up the storage on your Vista. Just drag and drop the file onto it and that's it. Unplug the Vista from the computer, power it on, wait a few seconds, and it should be converted to FCC mode. So it's super easy. The only thing is that you're going to have to do this every time you update your Vista unit. So that's just something to keep in mind. One other thing I should mention is that if you do change your region to FCC, you'll also gain access to a higher bit rate. So you'll be able to change the bit rate in your goggles from 25 megabits per second to 50 megabits per second, which is a pretty big difference and will give you a nice boost in video quality. So let's say you now have a power output of 700 milliwatts. Well, these goggles are actually capable of going even higher. And there's an equally complex hack that you can do in order to unlock that next level of potential. You want to know what it is? All right, I'll tell you. But in return, all I ask is that you guys just quickly hit that like button. It really does help me out a lot, but whatever. I'm not forcing you. It's your choice. So we're going to right click on our desktop, select new text document. And this time we're going to name it. N-A-C-O underscore P-W-R. And we're gonna click on it. And this time we're gonna write one of two things inside. We're either gonna write P-W-R underscore one. This will allow our goggles to go up to 1000 milliwatts power output, which I believe is the maximum legally allowed in the United States or you can write PWR underscore two. This will allow your goggles to go up to 1200 milliwatts. Again, we're gonna save it. This time, you're gonna put it onto a micro SD card, and instead of putting it into your drone, you're gonna stick it into the micro SD card slot in your goggles. After you do that, power on your goggles, wait a few moments, and you should be good to go. That's it. If you guys had trouble making these files for whatever reason, I'll also link the ones that I made in the description below so you guys can just download them and use those if you prefer to. As you can imagine, the difference between 25 milliwatts of power output and 1200 milliwatts is pretty significant. It's not 48 times stronger as you might think because there are diminishing returns. But after doing these hacks, I was able to fly further on the stock antennas uh, on these goggles than I was using a patch antenna on my analog setup. And when I was diving down that mountain, I honestly had crystal clear video the entire time. 
Again, I do feel like I should warn you guys one more time that if you do decide to do these hacks, you do increase your chances of overheating your video system. But so far I've had great results and I hope you guys do as well. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. I'd appreciate it if you gave it a like if you found it helpful and feel free to subscribe if you wanna stay in touch. As always, I appreciate every single one of you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.